Hi and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand, Forex and Gold Fundamental and Technical Analysis. My name is Leon and I am a currency trader at trading180.com and uh, getting into the week ahead, the 20th of August uh, and the main uh, news event next week will be the Jackson Hole Symposium taking place between the 24th and 26th of August. The title of this year's symposium is Structural Shifts in the Global Economy and Chair Powell will speak on Friday. We'll get into a bit more of that um, later in the video and in addition but less important will be the uh, economic data releases after the move higher by US yields this week following more solid economic data releases next week's schedule is much lighter suggesting no reason to see yields retrace this week's moves so durable goods data is probably the most significant release on Thursday and the highlight of the week will be the advanced PMI data in Europe taking place on Wednesday. The data from Europe has been terrible and if that is confirmed next week or well, confirmed again next week it will be likely help it will likely help drive the US dollar further stronger and that's a report from MUFG. So before we get into the technicals and some further fundamentals, just to uh, just for the traders that are in the uh, private mentoring group, if you go to a trading videos channel in the Discord group, um, you can access um, the weekly fundamental and technical analysis for the uh, for the pairs that are on the fundamental analysis spreadsheet. So that goes into a lot more in depth uh, fundamentals. If you are um, watching this video and want some some um, again some more in depth fundamentals, right? So and technicals. So uh, going into the dollar index and starting off here and the dollar has been going from strength to strength and um, really it's been a culmination of the fact that uh, the data really has been stronger than um, expected in terms of uh, you know the economic data although inflation is coming down um, you know there's the narrative of a soft landing and a soft landing or a hard landing is basically just the term used to um to describe whether the economy will go into a recession or not right if a, a soft landing will be maybe a bit of a bumpy ride but would be okay in terms of economic growth a hard landing will be if the economy goes into um you know a recession and so um you know the the fears of a um, hard landing have dissipated, and it's really the narrative has, has turned to a soft landing, which is supporting of the dollar at the moment. And um, and so when we look at uh, Jackson Hole, and all eyes on the Fed chief this week in Jackson Hole, uh, as well as other central banks as well. It says ECB Lagarde also speaks at Kansas City Fed's conference. Turkey Iceland set to hike this week. Sri Lanka to cut rates, but um, it's really all about what um, Jerome Powell is likely to communicate at the um, at Jackson Hole, and what Bloomberg Economics says. Uh, is that they we expect Powell to strike a more balanced tone in Wyoming, hinting at the tightening cycle cycle's end, right? So that's interest rate hiking cycle to come to an end, which we already know, right? While underscoring the need to hold rates higher for longer. And that's again another narrative, um, I guess, an effect of the fact that there is a soft landing because if the economy is holding up, then in fact the US and the Federal Reserve may not have to uh, cut rates, right? Because in a recession, um, if if the U if the US was heading into a recession, then you typically rate cuts do follow um, a recession or um, can lead into a recession, right? In anticipation of supporting the economy. So, um, if the US uh, economy is heading for a soft landing then it means in fact that there's no need for really rate cuts as soon as um, what was previously forecast and also as well they, they may be able to uh, keep rates uh, higher for longer which is actually supportive of the um, of the dollar and so with that being said looking at the dollar index really you're probably looking at um, more continued buys so if you do get a bit of a pullback um, into some sort of demand zone as uh, confluence, then that's going to be a nice area if you do want to be long on the dollar. Now, again, it does depend on what the Federal Reserve communicate this week. Nobody knows, but if they pretty much come out and are a bit supportive of the dollar, 
then I do think that the dollar is likely to go into at least uh, an auction or what you know traders would consider um, a ranging market state whether um, you know it starts to auction from here or whether it auctions from you know up at somewhere up at these highs right you might see something like you know this start to happen where you know the market decides to go um, uh, sideways and also as well what is supportive of the uh, dollar at the moment is China as well. So China going into um, or having economic problems and uh, economic contractions at the moment, deflation, um, stimulus not really working. That is also supporting the dollar because it creates more of a risk off environment and money in a risk on environment would come out of really the dollar and go into thing uh, currencies like commodity currencies uh, whose trade partners um who's china basically are their you know biggest trade partners if china's growing then their economy tends to you know import a lot of um, commodities from uh countries like australia new zealand for example um uh, canada and so um that is supportive of those currencies but if china is not growing then it's not going to buy as much commodities right in terms of you know for infrastructure projects etc and that also weighs on uh, the global economy in terms of commodity can anyway in terms of commodity prices and their economies in terms of imports and exports so um, at the moment the uh, the dollar is is being supported by some risk off sentiment um, because china is not growing so we'll either see a pullback to the upside or prices can continue going higher but uh, eventually there will be a pullback but any pullbacks i think are probably buying opportunities unless the Federal Reserve do um, actually uh, totally do a 180 and uh, they become very, very dovish, but can't see that happening for now. Um, so, yeah, so that's where we are. The market is still actually, when we, when we look at the, uh, the CME group, they're still thinking that there's a chance of a hold. So, um, so yeah, that, I wouldn't even say that's really weighing on the dollar that much, as I said, because it's more probably about the uh, the fact of a soft landing now but they are expected to hold let's see what happens uh, there so the probabilities can change we have about what's that 31 days according to the next FOMC meeting so let's see what happens with the probabilities um, of a rate hike or a rate uh, a hold and if this starts to go up if the hold if the sorry the hike starts to go up and increase then you can that's another supportive factor for buying the dollar so dollar yen dollar yen uh this week we did get prices move above the 145 area um again based off of a strong dollar came into this uh this uh, supply zone at the 14650s close to 147s and then we started to sell off now the um the japanese yen i am uh, positioning myself to go long on the japanese yen I have a long bias and uh, Japan's deeper inflation trend to keep Bank of Japan on edge over prices. The pace of core inflation gains X energy returns to 42 year high and service price gains hits 2% for the first time in decades. So the inflation side of things in Japan um, is looking like it's um, uh, supporting uh, a change in monetary policy and uh, in, in Japan it's a it's a big deal right it's a massive deal so um, I am uh, getting uh, long on the yen in anticipation of that fact now not against necessarily the uh, the US dollar but against the other currencies weaker currencies for example like the New Zealand dollar and the Australian dollar um, is more of my bias and I'm actually in a short uh, CAD uh, yen um, by um, trade which is uh, now profitable so yeah I think for me the yen is a buy and I said inflation data is key and inflation data came out uh, supporting um, for me a yen buy now one of the downsides to the yen is the fact that uh, Ueda the, the, the governor of the Bank of Japan seems to be still very dovish but um, I think um, with inflation coming up you can't really deny that data so I think overall there could be an opportunity to short this from this level here or if prices go up and go further higher uh, devaluing the yen 
the Bank of Japan will be forced to um, actually intervene, which they're close to doing anyway. And so if they intervene, basically they're trying to stop the yen's uh, devaluation, which should actually, again, appreciate the currency. Now, if you want to get long on the dollar yen, then you're looking for really any kind of pullback from really here, from these levels into a demand zone around here or around uh, this area right there. So around the 142.50s to the 140s. But I'm, um, I'm in a long term, my position, my bias is more long term to buy the yen. I say long term, but at least for the rest of the year, I'm looking to buy the yen, um, especially against uh, other currencies on the fence. Of, not say I'm on the fence. I would have more of a short bias, but I really, for me to get short on that dollar, I really want to see um, uh, some some things come in place. But uh, my bias overall would be to actually go more short on the dollar yen. I think there's more opportunity to the downside than there is to the upside. So uh, my bias actually is to go and short the uh, the dollar yen. Dollar Swiss, uh, again, my bias is more to the long side. We've made some higher highs at the moment. And you've got a bit of a demand zone there. So I think any pullbacks into um, either this lower level here, right in, into the 88, uh, 86, sorry, uh, round number, or even where we are from now, just to pull back into this demand zone around here would be nice for a potential um, a potential buy. Now, um, the Swiss franc is looking uh, a, a bit a bit expensive, and I say a bit expensive, I say very expensive. And so there were reports that in fact, the uh, some of the banks, some of the major banks are actually positioning them, themselves short on the um, on for, for the Swiss National Bank, which makes all the sense in the world because they've actually achieved their uh, their 2% target, they're below their 2% target. So um, I do think that any pullbacks on this currency pair are um, nice for a uh, long trade. If you do want to get short, then we're looking at supply zones somewhere around these highs before looking at getting short. You can get short off of you know, su support and resistance, but um, personally, I don't really trade uh, support and resistance in isolation. It's more about supply and demand for me. Support and resistance is just in addition to supply and demand zones. So uh, horizontal anyway. So um, if you are looking for short trades, you can look for you know either a short trade here for price to prove that there's supply there, and then wait for a pullback into that supply zone before getting short. But my bias is to the long side. Um, dollar CAD again. The CAD not necessarily being. Uh, supported at the moment. I think core inflation ended up coming down um, slightly. So again, the, the probability of a Bank of Canada um, hike is actually um, lower than they would hold. So at the moment, the, uh, the dollar seems to be uh, stronger out of the two. So really just pullbacks into, you know, some demand zones before looking at getting uh, long, not looking to buy the Canadian dollar anytime soon, not for now until uh, maybe if inflation becomes a problem, but no, that's pretty much where I am. If you are looking to get uh, short, then a pullback up into these zones here is decent. Just remember that this level's been touched a couple of times, so it's not necessarily the strongest area of supply. So that's where we are on the dollar CAD. Uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. I was saying last week that the path of these resistance is to the downside. I was waiting for a bit of a pullback, but never happened. Prices continue going through the demand zone. And so anyone who buys just off of technical analysis is always gonna get you know stuck and uh, thinking why levels don't work. And it's really because it's um, prices are driven by value. And uh, the New Zealand dollar uh, at the moment, um, the, the, the bank is actually holding rates. They're in a recession. Um, you know the 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 uh, the US um, is in a is in a better economic position than the um, than the New Zealand dollar, and as well, China isn't supporting the commodity currencies and actually supporting the um, the US economy, right? So now this just you know makes for a nicer pullback 
into that supply zone for me and then looking for some uh, some short trades uh, for now I think if you do want to be long on the New Zealand dollar I think you definitely need some sort of catalyst for you to get long on that but um, personally I'm not really looking for any kind of long trades at all even regardless of whether prices come up or not um, I'll ignore that and just look for you know basically um, one way uh, uh you know uh, the path of least resistance so um so yeah because it's harder to pick it's harder to pick the bottoms and try to buy a currency that is weaker um so there's no point in trying to do it even if it does happen so uh, if it pulls back then brilliant it just gives me a uh, an opportunity to short further right um the pound so looking at the pound and the pound actually had some decent news this week and so you the record uk wage growth keeps the bank of england on hiking path so companies bid up pay to retain staff in tight labor market and un unemployment increases as more people return to jobs market so uh, uk wage growth accelerated at the strongest pace on record underscoring the bank of england's concerns that it hasn't yet broken the wage price spiral feeding inflation across the economy so basically long story short they're looking to continue to hike so um with two i mean like my bias would probably be more to buy the the, the pound over the um over the uh, the dollar but um i think i've gone a bit cold on this currency pair i don't i think the upside is probably capped um, and also as well, I think the downside is probably capped. Although there are opportunities to buy still at these areas, I think if you're buying, then the upside is, I can't see really prices, you know, moving all the way to the upside here, not for a while anyway, um, but let's see. But uh, when you've got two uh, uh, currencies that are quite strong, you want to, I wouldn't necessarily say avoid them, but, uh, you know, be a bit more cautious. And I think there are better trades out there. So, uh, for me, um, I think I'm um, uh, less um, keen on this currency pair uh, at the moment. But there is still a divergence between both central banks. So if I had a bias, it would be more to buy the, uh, the, the pound than it would be the Federal Reserve. But these are the levels that you're looking at. Nothing's really changed from last week. Prices pretty much have gone um, in, you know, this contained within this high and this low right from here to here and so um yeah i think uh, for me i would uh, maybe just avoid this currency pair for now euro dollar uh euro again struggling a bit against the dollar whereas the dollar has had some really good economic news and economic data uh the same can't be said for europe europe has been struggling germany's been struggling and as we've uh, kind of highlighted at the beginning of the video um you know pmis have been um have haven't been great so if it continues then we could see a continuation of uh, the euro weakening down to even the 108s 107.50s so that would be something but um ultimately i think for now the uh the i think the uh the dollar has the edge so if you do want to be a buyer of the euro i mean now is a really nice level to look for a buy but it may not hold if the data doesn't support that narrative, right? So, um, you know, if you're going to go long on that euro, then um, you better hope that you have some news to support uh, that uh, that long trade. So that's where we are. Otherwise, you're looking at short trades up into an area of supply to look for uh, any kind of short trades to continue to go uh, long on that dollar or buy the dollar against the euro. Uh, euro yen and um, again I'm more bullish on the uh, the yen than I am the euro at the moment we do have finally some supply not the strongest area of supply at the moment but it's decent nonetheless uh, I do think intraday wise there is an opportunity to get involved in this uh, pullback so you'd be looking at something like this prices pull back and an intraday trade like a stop hunt um, around these uh, these highs so there's something there uh, if you do want to get low on the euro then that I think that the demand zone is really nice technically but I just um, my bias again is more to the short side so I'm looking for any kind of pullbacks to get involved in this to the uh, to the downside 
um, especially if um, you know the continued economic problems and issues uh, continue in, in Europe so that's where I am with this currency pair and these are really the levels that you're looking for euro pound euro pound uh, blasted through this uh, this demand zone the obviously the pound uh, strengthening based off of uh, interest rate hike hopes uh, and the market pricing that in um, in fact I didn't even really talk about the euro one second I did have an article up about uh, um, for the euro so the ECB still seen delivering one last hike in September and um, uh, a poll shows so economists see deposit rates being lifted to four percent next month and result come amid signs that inflation pressures are easing so there is um, some supportive um, evidence that the euro uh, again um, may have may uh, appreciate based off of interest rate hikes but um, the 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 problem is is just economically um, it the the eurozone isn't great so we could see a bit of a you know move to the upside as prices are in this overall uh, range this auction between you know the uh, 0 0.87s to 0 0.85 so about a 200 pip um, auction we could see prices move to the upside but ultimately I think the path of this resistance is to the downside as I think the Bank of England are a lot more um, hawkish than the ECB so um, the nearest really pullback is going to be all the way up at these areas here or if prices make lower lows like that then you're looking for a move to the upside pullback like that before going uh, short so that would be where really where I'd be looking for um, a trade if I was looking to trade this pair and uh, Aussie dollar again Aussie dollar I said I was saying last week same thing with New Zealand dollar part of these resistances to the downside and again you can see prices kind of broke through that area zooming out we have come down to a demand zone around here um, demand and then we've got some I think the rest of this is probably demand as well now again you really have to really have a strong reason for buying the Australian dollar at the moment I mean again you can always buy the Australian dollar based off of maybe some dollar from some US dollar weakness but really I think I'd, I tend to buy off of strength so um, any pullbacks into a zone uh, I'm really looking at again more continued downside um, at the moment there was some news that came out for the Australian dollar which I think it was unemployment came in higher so um, that was actually um, a, a supportive of a rate uh, hold in fact so uh, so yeah we've got really I think more moves to the downside to come uh, you've got the underside of this level which uh, from a daily perspective you could kind of see actually I think probably uh, it's a bit of a wider area of the support and resistance but I think I'd want to see yeah prices come into that supply zone right there that hidden supply before looking at getting uh, short I'm taking the short trade and finally gold gold again dollar strength saying this last week that prices could come down to come down to this really nice technical area uh, the 1886 and um, yeah let's see what happens around here but for prices to move to the upside we'd have to see some dollar weakness and again that could be triggered by what the Fed say this week uh, or not right so we could see um, you know the Fed could uh, be actually still be quite hawkish and in which case you're probably likely to see prices you know move further to the downside so um, depending on what the Fed say and if the market interpret that as being hawkish um, or, or dovish uh, is going to determine really where the price of gold is going to go at least in the short term so um, gold for me is all is always a long-term buy you know if you're doing if you're investing but from a uh, trading perspective um, it's a bit more uncertain so if you are uh, short dollars then by proxy you should look for long uh, gold and if you're long dollars then in fact you should look for any kind of uh, short gold trade so the nearest supply zone is going to be actually there 
so you could look for supply I'll pull back into this zone here the 1919s 1912s matter of fact before looking at some sort of short trade you know nice intraday short trades so zoom down into like the one hour or the whatever time frame you do trade and look for maybe some trade in and around that zone um, if that's you know your preference uh, in, in direction um, but that is it for this week so uh, yeah hope you have a great trading week and speak to you all soon stay blessed